Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 22, the King James Version Bible. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee, or vomit thee, out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Did you catch that? Repent. Repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now understand that a church in the Bible times to be part of that church, a person had to be a Christian, saved by Jesus Christ's blood, and baptized. So these are real Christians Jesus is talking to. He's telling them, you guys are all watered down. I'll vomit you out of my mouth. I will remove your name out of the, out of the book of life. You'll miss the rapture. Let's go back up to another church he's talked to in the same chapter, some of my favorite uh, scripture in the Bible. Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. <coughs> Excuse me. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. This church says that they're living for the Lord Jesus Christ, but Jesus knows that they're dead. Dead Christians, backslidden. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. They are backslidden Christians. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. The rapture will happen, and they'll get left behind, the backslidden Christians. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. There are a few Christians in that church that repent when they're backslidden, they repent of their sins when they sin, and they're ready to be raptured. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Or, he that does not overcome, the same shall not be clothed in white raiment, and I will blot out his name out of the book of life, and I will not confess his name before my father and before his angels. They'll get cast into the lake of fire. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit saith unto the churches. Very plain, my friends. Christ is talking to churches. He's not talking to regular people, to people who are unsaved. He's talking to people who have been saved by Jesus' blood and baptized. They're in big trouble, how most of the church is today. And here's the question. What do most Christians today and Kool-Aid served at a school picnic have in common? They're both watered down. I'm so tired. I'm so tired and sick and tired of the watered down church. I'm tired of the lukewarm church that Jesus Christ said he'll vomit out of their mouth. The church of Laodicea and the church of Sardis who most are, are backslidden. And you know, this is how the church is today. I talked last night about the mousy Christians. The ones that hide in their little hole in the wall and, oh, I'm so scared. Oh, I'm so scared to, oh no, oh no, I can't have a backbone for Jesus. I'm so meek and mild and scared all the time. The mousy Christians, watch the video from yesterday, and you got another breed of Christians called the ostrich Christians. They walk around, doop 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 doo, -doo, -doo. Oh, what's going on today? Oh, I'm going to walk around and, and look at Facebook today. I'm going to go to YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, doop 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 doo. Here's a video. Here's a video about uh, how we're the head and not the tail. Oh, praise the Lord. And here's a video about how once saved, always saved is true. And, and we can always go to heaven no matter how much sin's in our life. Glory be to God. Doop 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 doo. -doo. Oh, here's some videos. Uh, by people like Jonathan Cleck that talk about Egyptian hieroglyphics and, and uh, he sits there and pulls on his shirt all day and, and like he's trying to let demons out of his body. And, uh, but he's a great guy though. We love him even though he blasphemes the word of God and, 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 and is a liar uh, and lies from the pits of hell. Oh, we love this kind of guy because he tells us good things you want to hear. Doop -de -doop -de -doop -de -doo. Oh, let's go to Facebook. Oh yeah, here's my Christian friends. They're showing me puppy pictures today and little baby pictures and 
They give me scripture about how much Jesus loves us and how God loves us and we're all best friends with God and Jesus. Doop de doop de do. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go to church service on Sunday and I'm gonna look around and oh yeah, my pastor's gonna preach some more watered down garbage, not even from the Bible, and, and he's gonna look over all the sinners and ignore us and just tell us how great we are and how we're all going to heaven. Doop de doop de doop. Screech Like on the cartoons. Screech Oh 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 no, here's here's Paul Kids. Here's Paul Kitt's Watchman channel on Facebook and, and his YouTube channel. Oh, do 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 do. Uh, he's gonna. This is a mean guy. Uh, this is a guy that's not very nice. He he convicts us of our sins and and tells us things out of the Bible how we're gonna get in trouble. Oh, here we go. Roop. Head in the sand, and that's it. The ostrich Christian. They're gonna dance around and see all the fun stuff that they love, all the watered down garbage that they love, and all the lies, and and they love seeing people also by. Uh, the the newly named, newly self-proclaimed um, Elder Reverend Dave Zacker. <laughs> That's his new name, the Elder Reverend Dave Zacker. And uh, people like the 30 Glue of the Apocalypse and people like Jan Boshoff. You know all, all the regular characters. There's, there, there's millions of them. And they're going to go to all their places. They're just going to love what they see and hear. They're going to hear. They're going to hear people playing music of, of, of dumb songs that the Third Eagle made up and, and plays on his piano that are just dumb songs about about how much he loves Mitt Romney and how much he saw this. And they're going to look at all the hieroglyphics and they're going to look at all the divination that this, that's of the devil that the Bible says anyone who gets into divination and into the occult stuff is going to burn in hell. The kind of stuff that Jonathan Cleck teaches every day. They're going to go to all that, all that kind of stuff and just love it and say it's great. But they come to my wall though any of my Facebook channels, my YouTube channel, they're going to screech their brakes on. <laughs> they're going to screech their brakes on and burn rubber. They don't want anything to do with somebody like me. Because see, I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. They, 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 they don't hear people like me. Their pastors don't preach like I preach. Their friends on Facebook and YouTube don't preach like I preach. They're, they preach the soft soap, watered down, phony gospel. Out of things like the Nevermind Important Verses, a.k.a. the NIV Bible. They even use a Bible. Most of them use self-help books by guys like Rick Warren. You know, the guy who is the, the senior demon out at uh, Satan's Back Church. And he's their, he's their demon leader there. People like that. And they love it. But they come to this this place and they say, well, you know, this guy is just, you know, poor kid, uh, you know, you just, you preach too hard, man. Uh, you, you act like you're Elisha or Elijah or John the Baptist or, or Joshua or, or, or Peter or Paul. Uh, that's the old Bible stuff, man. We don't want to hear that stuff anymore. Uh, that was just for the Bible days. Yeah, yeah, just for the Bible days because God's different now. Uh, God's a nice God now. He's calm and gentle and kind and uh, he's all love. He wants us all to stand in a circle and, and, and sing Kumbaya and, and, and just love everybody. There's no sin anymore. There's no conviction. Uh, you're like a dinosaur, Paul Kid. You belong in a museum somewhere. You belong behind glass to just break in case of emergency. Uh, we don't want to hear your hardline stuff anymore. You Jesus freak, you Bible thumper, you holy roller. That's how people talk. That's how people think about me. They, they don't want to hear it anymore. And, and the young people, sadly for them, they never grew up in the era of the real church. My wife and I, and other friends of mine, uh, the few friends, <laughs> the few friends that I have, and they're online. I don't have any face-to-face uh, -face friends anymore because they've all abandoned me. They don't want to be around the Jesus freak, Bible thumping, holy roller. But we talk about my wife and I do about the old days when we were we were young kids, and, and and every Sunday, man, you went to church every Sunday morning for Sunday school, and you went for church, and you went for Sunday night church, for Wednesday night Bible study, for Friday night youth group. You knew. The hellfire and brimstone was coming down, man. You knew you were going to get convicted of your sins every week, and you knew you're going to fall on your face and repent because you knew that you were wrong. The pastors didn't play the jive they play today. They didn't play the j j, -j jive talking like the pastors do today. The j j jive talking, telling me lies. That's what they do all the time, man. They don't want to tell you the truth. They don't want to lose uh, the extra money they get for having their, their pews and, and, their, and their membership roles filled. They want to lose all the extra cash they get from the tithers who sit out there in the congregation and the pastors know they're shacking up in adulterous or fornicating relationships with, with the people right in the very church. They know they're sodomites. They know that they are inter surfing internet pornography. They know they're problem gamblers. They're problem drug addicts. They know they're child molesters. They don't care who they are. They can even be a, a Satan worshiper or an atheist. They don't care. All they want is the money and they want the roles, people on the roles and memberships so they can get more money in their pocket on top of the money that they fleece off everybody. Tell them they're the head and not the tail so they can take all their money in the prosperity doctrine. You know the one where the pastor prospers and everybody else gets broke? I'm just so tired of it. You know, I'm just so sick and tired of all the lies. 
there, there is no prosperity doctrine. If there was, Jesus Christ would have would have taught it. Jesus Christ himself was not prosperous. He didn't have any any fancy home. He didn't wear fancy clothes and fancy jewelry. The apostle Paul had a thorn in his flesh. It never went away. So by your own your own doctrine of the prosperity doctrine, Jesus Christ himself and the apostle Paul weren't living right for God because they didn't have fancy clothes and jewelry and homes. And the apostle Paul couldn't be healed of his affliction, so they weren't even living right according to you guys. You guys are just a bunch of liars, man. And the once saved, always saved junk. You might be selling, Paul Kidd's not buying. Save it for somebody else. I'm not buying that garbage at all because my Holy Bible, my King James Version Bible, tells me over 200 times that you must repent of your sins after you're saved. If you don't, you're not going to be raptured. You're not going to step foot into heaven. That's just it. It's not Paul Kidd condemning you to hell. You condemn your own self to hell by refusing to believe the truth out of the Bible. See, people come to me and ask me questions. They ask me for my advice. I don't give anyone my advice. You know what I give them? The King James Version Bible advice. And that's why I tell them up front. I'm not going to tell you what I think. You're not going to tell me what you think. I don't want to hear it. And I don't want you to hear what I think. Only what the King James Version Bible says and proves. That's it. Don't give me all your theories and all your junk. When I say something, you can believe that I've got King James Version Bible scripture to back up what I say. If not, I'm not going to say it. People don't like that. They call me mean and evil and they call me the bad guy and they call me just a just such a mean person and I've got a mean spirit and uh you know, I don't display the fruits, of the, the fruits of the Spirit, they say, or the Beatitudes, and they tell me I'm going to hell, and they tell me that I'm Antichrist. You know, like I said, just say it where somebody's going to listen to you. I don't, I don't even care, because what I'm going to do for you, people that, that talk to me that way, I'm just going to pray for you, man, because I don't have any enemies. So many people hate my guts. People, people have threatened to kill me online before my ministries. They hate me, man. They want me to die. All I do is love them back, and I pray for them, and I ask Jesus Christ to touch them. You know why? Because I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian, a Christian. I serve Jesus Christ as my master, as my Lord and Savior. And he told me to pray for those that spitefully use me. He told me to love those that hate me. And that's what I do. That's what he told me to do. And I do exactly what he tells me to do. When I fall short, you better believe I fall on my face immediately and repent and ask him to forgive me of those sins because I am not going to miss heaven like most of the, of the so-called church by refusing to repent because they're too haughty and arrogant. They're too cocky. They're too self-righteous and, and too prideful. They don't have a backbone. They don't have any guts. And don't and don't mistake having a backbone and having guts with not being meek, mild, or humble. Because being meek, mild, and humble, what that means is understanding in your heart of hearts, you can do nothing without Jesus Christ. That you're nobody. You're you're a slave for Jesus. You're the least in all of His kingdom, and you rely on Him for everything. That's what being meek, mild, and humble is. You're supposed to be bold as a lion on top of that, and have a backbone made out of Kevlar, made out of steel, made out of iron. Have some guts, man. But the watered-down Christian church, they don't care. Like I said, it's like going to, you guys remember. I know I remember when I was a little kid. I'd go to a high school, I'd go to a grade school picnic. Man, the Kool-Aid was so watered down, you could barely even taste the sugar and, and, and taste the actual fruit. That's why I'm saying, that's why today's church is like getting Kool-Aid at, at an elementary school picnic. It's watered down, man. It's so watered down, I can't even recognize it anymore. It's a church of Laodicea. It's a church of Sardis. And they don't even, they don't even care. They don't care. They don't want to hear the truth anymore. They like, act like the Bible is is their own their own little oyster, and they pull the pearl out, and they just make the pearl into what they want to make it into. They slice and dice. They cut and paste. They twist around and pretzel God's word to suit what they want to hear. I've showed people those hunters of scripture that prove you have to repent of your sins after after you're being saved. You know what they do? They call me a liar. They call me of the devil. They call me a demon. Can you believe that? They aren't calling me those names. I represent Jesus Christ. Who are they calling those names? My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And woe, woe, woe unto them. It's just so sad. It really is. People just don't have a brain anymore. They don't fear God. They don't fear and respect Jesus Christ. But they will one day. Because every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ is Lord. And all these so-called Christians that believe in it, that are watered down and, and won't repent of their sins and believe in once saved, always saved and and follow false religions like Catholicism and like Mormonism and Seventh-day Adventists and Jehovah's Witness and New Age and and um, if I didn't say Catholicism, put that one in there, I think I did and um, is Islam and Chrislam and Buddhism and Hinduism there's so many of them, there's only one way Jesus says no one goes to the Father but through the Son and the Bible says at the very end of Revelation if you add one word or take one word away you'll get added to you all the plagues contained herein and get taken away your, your eternity in heaven so if you belong to a religion that adds or takes away one word from the Holy Bible, I don't care what you believe. You can, you can believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. But if you add things to that, and they have your own Bible or your own prophet's words added in, or you take something away, 
you're not following Jesus Christ. I don't have a religion. You know what my religion is? The King James Version Bible, verse, chapter, book, Genesis to Revelation, cover to cover, all 66 books. That's my religion. God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit contained in that book. They have everything that I need. I don't need anything else. People ask me all the time, have you read this book? Have you read this book about the harbinger or, or whatever it's called? Or have you read this book? About, have you seen the, have you read the books about the, you know, the, um, whatever it is, the end time stories where everybody, it, it, it goes over the, the whole end times, the rapture and the tribulation. The only book I have to read is the Holy Bible. That's it. I don't care about any other book. That's just how I am. And if you don't like that, I'm sorry. That's just the way that it is. I, I focus on Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Every day, I take off more of man and put on more of Jesus Christ. Take the old man off and throw him in the garbage can. Put on more of Jesus Christ. When you do that, you lose the desire to watch television. You lose the desire to watch all the Hollywood movies all the time. You lose the desire to just be, to be involved in self and me, 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 me. You start focusing on Jesus Christ and you focus on reap, reaping the harvest that's so plentiful. It's rotting in the fields. So many people don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Most of the world is unsaved and, the, and most of the rest is backslidden. Jesus said, narrow is the way and straight is the gate and few shall enter. Few Christians shall enter because the unsaved aren't going to enter anyway. She's talking to the Christians. Understand, my friends, time is short. Time is very, 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 very short. And everyone is free to walk away from Jesus Christ. No man can take you from his hand, but you're free to walk away. And you need to just stop the lying. You need to just stop all the j j j j talking, telling me lies. I don't want to hear it. I'm not going to put up with it. I'm going to call you on it. And you'll get mad at me, and you'll try to argue. You know what will happen? I'll have to just delete you from my friends list, delete you from my subscribers. But I'll just pray for you every night, man. And I'll just love on you through prayer. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you and to touch you and to, and to help you. Even though you hate my guts, I'll ask him to help you. That's just what I do. That's what he told us to do. So stop being watered down. Start getting extra strength, man. Start getting strength. I don't drink coffee, but I heard that espresso, like a, a, I guess they got like a triple or a quadruple espresso. That's the real strong stuff. Get a quadruple espresso spirit and soul and backbone and start and get rid of that watered down elementary school picnic Kool-Aid. And, and start getting some guts, man. Pour your head out of the sand. Get out from behind the, the little hole in the wall, little mousy Christian. Get out of your easy chair. Tip over the 55 gallon in, drum of industrial strength popcorn and stop eating popcorn and drinking your Kool-Aid and, and, and watching the war and watching the game. Get in the game. Get in the war. Because <clears throat> we're at war every day, my friends. Every morning when you wake up, put on the full armor of God and get ready because the rapture is imminent. Only God knows the day and the hour, but he told us. He'd give us discernment if we were excitedly watching to let us know when the season is. We're in the season. I believe we're in the last moments of the last moments of the season, my friends. I've been I've been silenced alarm now for 27 months on, on Facebook. Day in and day out, 12 to 15 hours a day, all by the glory of God. All over the, the internet, I'm pounding home the word. I'm not going to stop till he calls me home. I owe him everything. I owe him a debt that I can never scratch a surface to repay. He saved my soul and he saved my life dozens of times that I know I should have been dead. When I was backslidden, I'd be in hell right now if it wasn't for Jesus Christ's mercy on me. I can never even scratch a surface to repay him through all eternity. All I can give him is me. It's not much, but I give myself freely to my master. I'm a slave for Jesus Christ. The way the Apostle Paul said, don't give me your jive, jive, jive talking, telling me lies, saying that the Bible says servant, look in the original transcripts, the word is translated into slave. So it's time, my friends, to understand all you people that believe in false doctrines and false religions, it boils down to this. Either you're lying or God's lying. You tell me which one you think is lying, you or God. I can tell you right now, it's you. Because my God, Jehovah God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Get it? Holy Spirit, never have lied, never will lie. They're perfect. So just forget about it. Get right now, my friends. Time's almost up. Let's pray. I love you, Jesus, so much. I thank you for your love, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your kindness, for your gentleness, your compassion. I pray that you would just help the backsliders to repent of their sins. And if they don't, Jesus, I pray you'd make their lives living hell. I pray you would make their lives living hell until they fall on their knees and repent and come back to you. And those who don't know you as Lord and Savior, who are unsaved, you tug on their hearts until they come to you. And those of us who are Christians, who live for you the way the Bible says, who are too lazy and too sorry to get out and witness to the lost and pray for them, I pray you'd make our lives living hell as well. I ask this, this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you watch this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again the third day and went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father. Since that time, you've been making a place in heaven for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Please wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. 
make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. When you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. And when you get saved, get your King James Version Bible. It's the living, breathing Word of God. The way you feed your body with food and water every day, this Bible will feed your spirit and soul if you read it every day. Pray to Jesus daily. He's your new best friend wants to talk to you every day. Get water baptized as soon as possible. Dunked underwater, immersion baptized at a Christian church. Sprinkle baptized doesn't count. Do it over again, my friends. Pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit from head to toe. You draw closer to Christ by living for Him every day, by reading His Word, by praying. It's called being sanctified. Take your King James Version Bible to church. When the pastor preaches, when I preach, when anyone does or talks about the Bible, you compare it. If it don't match, you close that Bible, you walk out of church immediately, you unfriend, you unsubscribe, you run away as fast as you can because anyone who'd lie to you, in Jesus' name, anyone who'd lie to you about what the Holy Bible says, what God's own Word says, what God Himself says, will drag you to hell right along with them if you let them, my friends. If you have questions, comments, concerns, you want me to pray for anything, from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed of faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it, praise the Lord. When I prayed for it, He gave it to me. And I see miracles every day, my friends, every day, all through the glory of God. And if you ask me to pray for you, I will pray for you every day, expecting that miracle in your life. And I know that God will perform that miracle if it's within His holy will. And if He does, again, it's all through His praise, honor, glory, power, might, majesty, strength, love, compassion, mercy, kindness, tenderness, gentleness, understanding. Nothing to do with me. I'm the least in God's kingdom, a tiny fish swimming in a huge ocean, a slave for Jesus Christ. Please share the link to this video, to this channel, with friends, neighbors, coworkers, loved ones, with strangers. Drop it in a blog and plant the seed and walk away. Let God water it so it can grow. The cotton candy, powder puff, syrupy fluff, garbage you hear all across the internet, all across churches everywhere, is the word that leads to hell. The true word that leads to heaven, that points you to the cross of Jesus Christ, where he can gently kneel you. He can wash you with his precious blood and save your soul, is the King James Version Bible. Genesis to Revelation, cover to cover, verse chapter book, all 66 books, the way I preach it here. Not because I'm anything, is God's everything. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. May God bless you. Thanks.